So laptop design has been very boring for a very long time. But this right here thinks kind of outside the box, which is why I was excited to make this video. We have a laptop with a very different design in many different ways, from the outside with the vegan leather exterior to the inside where the screen folds all the way back into a tablet or into a tent mode or into regular laptop mode. And even more than that, it has a different type of processor on here. This has cell service on here. And of course it has a hidden pen in the bottom. So there's plenty to talk about with this new style of laptop from HP. Very exciting. Like I said, I was really looking forward to making this video. And so I wanna dive into everything you might wanna know about this laptop, both the pros and the cons. Most of the pros are really about the design. Not only is it different, but I think HP really crushed it with how they thought everything through with this laptop. So let's start with that. Let's start with the design of this laptop. And on the very outside, like I mentioned, we have a vegan leather exterior, which is a fancy term for pleather or really just synthetic on the outside, which I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. It looks really nice. It feels nice. There's some stitching on there as well. And of course you can wipe this down uh, if it gets dirty, which to be fair, after using this for about two weeks, I'll say that it does maybe get a little dirt on there. So when you get some dust on here, you will want to wipe it off because it is kind of visible. When you open this up, like I mentioned before, the screen does some pretty crazy stuff. So if you open it all the way back, you'll see that it probably opens to about 135 degrees, which is, which is reasonable for a standing desk or really any situation I've been in. And if that's not okay with you, you can actually also go into a tent mode like this right here, or you can go all the way down to a tablet mode. Now we've seen other laptops that fold into a tablet, but this one does it differently. Rather than folding back and you have like a keyboard on the back, which is weird and annoying, this one flipping this way feels much more natural. It really feels like it's supposed to be a tablet. Now, as far as the display goes, I'll talk more about that in a second, but I wanna point out on the very top where we have our webcam, this also has face ID or Windows Hello, the webcam has a really nice little switch on here. I think this is something that HP really thought through well. Obviously they know a lot of people are concerned with privacy, people have like little pieces of tape on their webcam. I don't know if you've seen that, but this right here eliminates the need for that with a physical switch on the top. Genius move, I'm really glad they have that. It's really small and subtle. And if we slide it over, you get some little diagonal white lines to indicate that the webcam is blocked. I love having that on there, especially now when more people are having Zoom calls with their coworkers. Maybe it's an audio only Zoom call at seven in the morning. Odds are you're not looking your best and you're gonna wanna make sure that you have that little thing closed just in case you hit the camera button. Now it's a double layer of safety there. Now, another thing before I talk about the display is really, really cool. I mentioned the pen on here. So if we look at the bottom of the inside, uh, we have the pen, which I think is a really great feature because for a laptop with a touch screen like this that folds into a tablet and, and tent mode, a pen is really going to be a valuable piece of hardware here. Whether that is for taking notes or for drawing stuff in a meeting, like having a pen is really a nice thing to have with a touchscreen laptop. And in the past, you kind of just had to have your pen kicking around your bag or you needed to remember to bring it with you. This one right here, it kind of just fits right in a nice little cubby on the top of the keyboard. So I really love that design. And at first, before I even used this, I saw the pen and I was skeptical because it does look a little bit two dimensional, but honestly, after using the pen, I was pleasantly surprised. It feels very natural. Writing this with this was, was no problem at all. And it's actually a very comfortable shape for a pen. We also have a little rocker, so a little button right there. And then at the very top, we have another button. So this button, unfortunately, I'm not, I'm not the biggest fan of this one because it feels like it's a little too sunken in. So it's a little bit harder to press. But regardless, you can use that to take screenshots and draw on your screen and, and really customize it to do whatever you want. We also have replaceable tips that come in the box. And I mean, obviously this comes in the box as well, so you don't have to purchase it separately. And so the pen, I think, really fits the package here. And I mean, you're gonna see throughout the rest of this video, and, and this is another example here, this laptop is kind of tailored towards a slightly different crowd. This is not going to be the power user who is coding, writing a new app in your basement. Like this is going to be something that is more versatile for going out, for going to meetings, coffee shop meetings, executive meetings, like things of that nature. This is really going to be geared towards the managers, the executives, uh, and maybe even the students for that matter out there who want something that's a little bit more portable. Now, 
I mentioned the display. Let's talk about the display right now. There's some good and some just okay things with the display. Starting off with what I really like, the first thing is that it is a 13 and a half inch display but it looks much, much larger than your average 13.3 inch display. And the reason for that is because this one's using a different aspect ratio. It's becoming more and more popular for these compact laptops to have a three by two aspect ratio. So rather than a lot of other laptops that have like 16 by nine or, or, or like 20 by nine, whatever it might be, this one right here is looking at three by two, which I think is really nice. So you're looking at a much, much taller display, which gives you more real estate, it's less scrolling. Uh, and at the same time, I find that it just feels more usable. So that's a big positive here. A little bit of a negative is that the resolution on here is actually only 1920 uh, by I think 1280, I believe is what it is. And it does get reasonably bright as well. So the display overall, it's not like a total A plus, but I'm very happy that they packed in at least some pretty decent specs on this laptop. Okay, so that's the physical design for the top half. Now, looking at the bottom half, we've seen other laptops that are kind of in similar in style to this from Microsoft, for example, where the keyboard is detachable. And I really love that this keyboard is not detachable because this is infinitely better, in my opinion, than a detachable keyboard. It just really feels very, very nice. Uh, on the right side, we have our speakers on either side of that, uh, which gives you better sound quality. We'll test that out in a second. But the keyboard, like, I know keyboards can be a little bit subjective and everyone has their own preference, but this keyboard is really pleasant to type on. You can type very, very quickly. It feels smooth. Like if there's one thing HP really does well, besides aesthetics, it's keyboards. And their keyboard on here is no exception. We have backlighting on here. And really one of the highlights with this laptop, like I mentioned, this is geared more towards somebody who's going to be in meetings, taking notes, uh, in a coffee shop, situations like that and it might be beneficial to not be typing really loud in a meeting. And so this has a very quiet keyboard. Not only does it have really nice travel and really nice like mechanical feel to it, but it also somehow is relatively quiet for how physical the keys actually are. Below that we have our trackpad, which is not especially huge. It's kind of an average size uh, compared to other three by two laptops. This is a little bit smaller because we do have that pen on the top. Um, so I, I think the trackpad does it more than a decent job. But with that being said, let's actually get into a speaker test and a webcam test as well. Okay, so this is a test with the onboard microphone and webcam. I'm in a studio, so keep that in mind. It probably looks a little bit better than it actually would in your living room Zoom call. But with that being said, something I wanted to point out now, and I think it's really easy to illustrate with the webcam test, is actually the display does kind of have a little bit of screen wobble. So if I put my hands on the table and move around a little bit, you'll see that there is definitely a little bit of wobble there. It kind of rocks back and forth a lot. It's a little bit of a drawback, uh, but otherwise, you guys can leave a comment and let me know how this camera looks and how the microphone sound if you are in a Zoom call. Like I said, it's limited to 720p, which is unfortunate for a 2021 webcam, but that seems to still kind of be the standard for a lot of laptops. Now, if you look at the top of the keyboard, we do have our full set of function controls, including screen brightness, volume, uh, playback controls, and of course, the uh, backlighting on the keyboard, which has three different levels from off, low, and high, which I think is very nice to see that. Oh, and something else I wanna point out, I left the sticker on the top. You can see where the SIM card goes. There's this little tray next to the pen. And I think it's really convenient that it has that because this is a 5G capable laptop, which means if you get data for this laptop, you don't have to worry about connecting to Wi-Fi when you're in coffee shops or, or lecture halls or wherever you might be, having your own internet connection with this without needing Wi-Fi, I think is very convenient. So that's pretty much everything to look at with this laptop. When you close it, you can see on either side, we really don't have a lot as far as ports go. On the right side, we have a USB type C uh, and we have a headphone jack. And on the left side, we have another USB type C. And the good thing here is that both of these do have a little LED indicator light because they are both capable of being charged through that. So you have a little braided charging cable, a really nice cable, honestly, that comes with this laptop. You can charge on either side, so it doesn't matter. You're never gonna be crossing wires or anything like that. Now, you don't have an SD card slot or anything for HDMI or USB type A. And so that kind of ties in with the concept of this laptop is definitely not for power users. This is a laptop that is, like I said, going to be for managers and students and, and people looking to take notes and travel and be very versatile. 
but as far as power users go, you're not gonna have a lot of connections on here. And even more than that, that kind of leads us right into the next subject of what is inside this laptop. So unlike most other Windows laptops out there, this is not running an AMD or an Intel chip. Instead, it's an ARM-based chip from Qualcomm. So you might have seen recently that Apple's moving to their M1 Max uh, because M1 is an ARM-based chip, which is going to be more efficient, and it has plenty of benefits as well. So this right here is an ARM-based laptop, but the fact is, Windows isn't quite there yet. Like the software is not quite ready to run on this. So while you are you know, definitely gonna get a perfectly normal experience with Windows and Microsoft Office and Google Chrome and, and Spotify and a lot of other apps like that, there still is a very large selection of apps and, and software that you just can't get on here. So for example, if you want to run something like Adobe Premiere Pro or, or Photoshop or uh, Signal or even like OBS Screen Recorder, there's a lot of different softwares that you just can't get on this laptop yet because there isn't a good em emulator out there, just not yet. And on top of that, uh, a lot of the software just hasn't been developed for this kind of new architecture on chips. But with that being said, it is definitely progressing. We're starting to get more and more software that is optimized for this. And on top of that, this, this architecture does have its own benefits. So the first one, like I said, this does have 5G compatibility. So you can put a, put a SIM card in there and get data wherever you go. The second thing is that the battery life on here is really phenomenal. Uh, they're advertising over 24 and a half hours of battery life for video playback. Obviously, if you're running apps, it's gonna be a little less than that. But still, you're looking at a full, easily like three full work days of watching videos on this laptop. So the battery life is really incredible. But otherwise, that's kind of a summary of what this laptop really is. So when it comes down to it, who is this laptop really for? Well, I think it's very different. It's very obvious that it's a different laptop from most others out there. And I think that the people who would most enjoy this would not be the power users. It would not be somebody looking to play games. It would not be somebody doing a lot of engineering modeling or video editing. Instead, it's going to be the managers, the executives, and honestly, the students and travelers as well. And the reason for that is because, first of all, it's a very light and versatile laptop. So traveling with this, whether you're going to classrooms and you have a backpack, or if you're going to meetings, or if you're traveling on a jet, having a nice small laptop with a very, very long battery life is going to be a huge advantage. Secondly, the fact that it folds all the way back to a tablet or into tent mode makes it very easy if you're in a meeting and you wanna quickly present like a small little presentation you have to maybe two or three people in the meeting or two or three people in a coffee shop or just some other students on a project, it's a very convenient way to interact with other people. And for travelers, I mean, the obvious benefit is that it fits on the back like the little tray table on a plane. And of course, the other benefit here is that it does have that SIM card in there or the SIM tray. So if you are a student or if you're somebody who is having a lot of meetings, not in the same location, it's gonna be nice to not have to worry about like, like the Wi-Fi in a large lecture hall, which honestly is almost always terrible, or a coffee shop Wi-Fi, which is potentially not secure, or going between different buildings in your office and losing Wi-Fi in between. So for those reasons, I think that those people, those groups, would really love this laptop. But anyone else who's going to be more of a power user, I would pass on this one and really aim for something that has a more classic architecture with your chip and has more software compatibility. But you guys can leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of this brand new HP Elite Folio. Honestly, I love this laptop. I'm definitely gonna be bringing it around. Unfortunately, I can't edit videos on there, but for any like weekend getaway where I have to write some blog posts, this is going to be my laptop of choice. As always, if you enjoyed this video, consider liking and subscribing. I'm Mike O'Brien, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.